This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In the previous lesson, we looked at a way to adjust an image using a graduated filter. I love them, and I love what they can do, and they are very flexible, but they draw straight lines. And sometimes what you need done isn't in a straight line. So let's open up this image right here and go into develop. If you can see, we've got two climbers. There's one guy, actually that was a gal right there. She's going for the top and I assume he's belaying her down there. So I took this photograph, not just for them. Actually, I hardly noticed him when I took it. I just liked the rock formation. It's in an area called Valley of the Gods in Colorado, not too far from the Air Force Academy. Anyway, I like the photograph. I want to fix it up a little bit, change it. But if I'm talking about that graduated filter, remember that's right here. If we come over to an image and begin working, we're dealing with this very straight line kind of thing, and that rock's not a straight line. That's going to be a problem. So what we're going to do is go ahead and get rid of that by pressing the delete key. That's the backspace key in Windows. Don't forget, same key, different name. We're going to use another tool. It's a tool that allows us to decide what we want. And it's not a straight line. It can be anything you want. It doesn't use a gradient. It's this one right here. Now you can get to that tool by pressing the letter K on your keyboard. It's called the adjustment brush. It's really neat because you paint the area that you want to change. Now once you've done that, You've got all your options right in here to change it, and it will only change it in the area that you painted. We've got two brushes. You've got a brush that paints and a brush that erases areas. You've got a button right here to change the size. Notice you've got two circles, though. You've got an inner circle and then a real thin outer circle on that line. That's the feather. If I go to feather and change this, you can see how that goes in and out. So I can't actually go over there and touch it because the brush is going to move with me. But understand that the inner circle is solid. That's going to get the full impact of the adjustment. And as it goes out to the outer circle, it will slowly dissipate. I suppose if I come over here, for example, and begin painting, see how it's a soft edge. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. And let's go ahead and take the feather down to zero and do the same thing, and it's a harsher edge. That's what that does. What we have down here also is flow. Flow is how aggressive. If you've got flow at 100% when you paint, it paints it 100%. If you change the flow to say, oh, let's go down to about 40, 50%, 43, that's between 40 and 50, and we come over here again and begin painting, notice how it works? You've got to keep painting over and over. Eventually, you would get to 100%. So that's what flow is. Density is like opacity. How aggressive is the effect going to be applied to the image? And you have one more option called an auto mask. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's change our feather a little bit, but let me show you the shortcuts. Over here, if you want a bigger or smaller brush, you press the right or left brackets. If you want to feather the edge, you hold on the shift key impress the right or left brackets. You can do everything with shortcuts. What I want to do is paint out the rocks. I don't want the sky in the image. If I come over here and begin painting, it's kind of like, well, yeah, but you're not that good of a painter, Andy. You're getting into the sky. Exactly. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. Let me change my flow back to 100%, and let's talk about auto mask. What auto mask does is it tries to stay within a certain range of color information and brightness for you. So the rocks are very different than the rest of the image. With auto mask on, let's get a little bit of a smaller brush here, not much. I'm going to make sure that the center, the plus sign, is on the rocks, not in the sky. And when I do that, watch what happens. Notice that I'm staying, and it's very careful. I'm staying with the plus sign on the rocks. I'm not moving off those rocks. If I do, it'll start painting the sky. So as long as you stay in that area, and as long as there's a difference between what you want and what you don't want in the painting, it'll work. I'm being careful up there. I don't want to get in that sky. So I come down to about here. 
Now that's all I really need that auto mask for. So I'm going to turn that off now. In staying away from my edges, let's go ahead and fill in everything else. It's a nice thing to have when you need it. Finds the edge for you and then works it. Looks like snow almost, doesn't it? Okay, let's try this. Now that that area is selected, I do have an exposure of an extreme four. I can bring that back and it's only gonna influence those areas. So this tool allows me to very precisely control the areas that I wanna change. Let's do a couple of things. Let's take the exposure down a little bit more. And let's add a little bit of clarity to those rocks. I like that option. Maybe a little bit more sharpness. I'm going to overdo it here so you can see what it does. Now we have no noise or moray, so we don't have to worry about those too. But you could even try something like saturation. If we pull that down, we can make it look almost like an older image with a really neat blue sky in the background, I suppose. We could do that. But I want to warm those rocks up a little bit or maybe even cool them down. So we're going to come down to the little box right here and decide on a tone that we want to put on those rocks. Maybe a bit of orange. Or you want to cool them down a little bit, a little bit of blue. That's a bit much. So we can take this slider right here and pull it down until we see what we want. And the same thing over here. If you want to warm them up a little bit, you don't want a whole lot, we can use the slider to pull that down. You like what you see? Click OK. You want to see the before and the after, we can use the backslash key in our case. And as you can see, it didn't touch the sky. It's only working in the area that we defined with the adjustment brush. If you get into an area and you've overdone the masking part, you can always erase it with this tool right here. If you come over into the image and you began painting, let me go ahead and do that just to prove a point. Let me go ahead and take this back up to something crazy. I come over here and then begin actually taking that part out with the eraser. So in the previous lesson, the gradient adjustment was really nice, but it works kind of in a straight line. This tool allows us to select literally anything that we want Paint those areas out, use the auto mask to find your edges, and then control anything on the image. On to the next.